So I wanna build myself an ESXi farm, a home lab environment with a whole bunch of computers. Some that I got for free, some that I've had for a very, very long time, some that I went online to eBay, some that my family and friends no longer wanted and I said, hey, give them to me. And I've got all these computers that are spare. They're just sitting around. What am I gonna do with all these computers? Well, you can go and deploy ESXi onto all of them. This is what I love about old computers is that you can still repurpose them and I love to repurpose them to actually add to my existing home lab. I've got a home lab with a whole bunch of gear. Here, here is what it looks like. Here's my existing home lab. This is what I've got right now. Before we do chat about that, my name is Emilio. I love tech and hopefully you do too. Subscribe, do the button thing so you don't miss out on anything. I release videos every single week. And look, we're talking a little bit here about computers and home labby sort of stuff. If you wanna know more about a home lab, down below I've got a link to a full length training course where I go into a lot more detail about what a home lab is, the purpose of it, and give you some ideas and then go into how to actually build a home lab. All right, let's talk a little bit about my computers. Here is what I've got. I've got a whole range of computers. I've got some full big desktops, sort of medium sized desktops and larger desktops. I've got Dell, HP, I've got little computers. Here's some little computers that I've got. I absolutely love these little computers. There's a couple of little Intel NUX in here. I've got a HP, little small little HP, and then an old Mac mini, which I can also repurpose. I don't need the Mac OS running on that. I can actually repurpose it to actually install ESXi. Then there's a plethora of old laptops. These old laptops that I've had running around. So all in all, five laptops that we are gonna be testing and seeing whether we can get ESXi, different versions running across all of these. We've got ourselves a couple of HP laptops right here, one of them being touchscreen. These are really, really nice. Uh, they were running Windows 8 and Windows 10. We're gonna get ESXi running onto them. Here is a small little Asus. Uh, this is running a slower processor, still an Intel, but it's not actually an i7 or an i5, it's an Atom. The next one on the lineup here is a Lenovo and then we're finishing off with a larger MSI gaming laptop, which hopefully is one of the more grunty ones where we can actually run a whole bunch of VMs directly onto it using ESXi. VMware ESXi is essentially an operating system that you can download completely for free off the VMware website. Just go into Google, type in download VMware ESXi, for free, you can use it completely for free in a home lab environment. Different versions of ESXi are gonna work on different sorts of computers. Now, as of this video, the current version of VMware ESXi is version eight. Before that came version seven, and then you had all the sixes. There was six, seven, six, five, there was six, and then you had all the versions of the version five and backwards, right? Sort of went like that. Now, what you're gonna find is sometimes the latest version, which is ESXi version eight, won't run on every single one of these computers. Now, the next step, of course, was to get all of these onto USB sticks. I needed to make these USB sticks bootable. I like a package called Rufus, some free software that you can download off the internet, and then you can actually make any USB stick bootable with a specific ISO. And then I've started running those USB sticks into the sides, into the fronts, into the backs of the computers to actually get them booting with ESXi. And if everything worked, I was able to see the loading screen of ESXi, which for the most part was good, was successful. And then I was able to install ESXi directly onto each of these computers. Different flavors, different versions of ESXi. Now version eight, I could not get it to run across all of these computers. It just wasn't available, wasn't compatible against each of these computers because some of these are fairly old and they said, you know what? We're not gonna bother supporting these old ones. The hardware, the CPU, the graphics, the motherboard, all of the bits inside there are not supported by these latest versions of ESXi. The other thing that you gotta think about is these are desktops and laptops. They're not servers, right? If you're talking about servers, you're, we're looking at a full rack-based server, what you'd find generally in a business. Well, these are not servers. These are desktops and laptops. VMware ESXi generally is a server-based product. It's for the enterprise. It's for a company which are gonna be generally using bigger servers. So in me playing around with this, I definitely could not get version eight running on all of them. So I had to go and download version eight, version seven, version six, all the different flavors of version six and play around with those until I finally got some working on some. The other thing I had to do is some of these, the drivers weren't even available on any of the versions of VMware. So I had to go and download the customizable versions of these. Now, what I mean by that, the company Dell itself actually has a customized version 
of ESXi. So they've actually got the ESXi ISO and they've customized it and actually made it work and install all the drivers and everything onto that you know, customizable ISO and actually install it onto Dell products. And that's the same deal with HP and other vendors have done the same sort of thing. So it was a little bit of hard work to actually get the different versions of ESXi actually working and compatible against each of these computers. The other thing I needed to make sure is that these computers all support virtualization technologies. The CPU itself needs to actually support the virtualization technology to convert the computer into a hypervisor, essentially making it into an ESXi host. So unless it had that, it wasn't able to run. So after I got past all of that annoyances of trying to find the ESXi versions and all of that, so what were the results? Well, we couldn't get ESXi running on every single one of the computers. There was a couple that I couldn't even get ESXi running at all. They just were not working whatsoever. So I had to sort of repurpose them for something else, run Linux, for example. But as you can see right up here, we've connected to a few of them and we we're able to get it running on most of them. Some of the other ones were just not uh, powerful enough. There was no drivers available. There was no customizable version available to even get ESXi running. But here's one of the ones that we've got, an Elite Desk. This was the uh, Elite Desk 800. And we got actually version eight running. And I'm super happy about that version eight. So the Mac Mini, we managed to remove Mac OS and get ESXi version six. Seven was not able to get version eight running on this one. Here's another example where we were able to get our Intel NUC. This is the i7. We had a version 7.0, and this is an updated one, which I, I believe this one was the customizable version. This one, here you go, here's another one. Yes, we were able to get it running, but it was not able to find the manufacturer and the model. So sort of just interpreted it with these weird characters over here but we got ESXi still running, which is really, really cool. Now, not all of them worked, but most of them did. So it was a great, great exercise. And maybe you wanna try this out yourself. Go and get yourself some old computers. Maybe if you've got a bit of spare cash, go and buy yourself some old spare computers. Ask your friends and family to give you old stuff and then play around and build yourself an ESXi farm. I mean, the great thing about this is you can just take advantage of the processing power of these old computers and build a whole bunch of VMs directly onto them because that's the whole point, right? Maybe playing around with different versions of Windows, of Linux, of other operating systems. If you want to know a lot more about ESXi, I've got a full length course on ESXi, on VMware, on VMware version eight, if you want to know more, so you can go check that out as well. But there you go, there was my little experiment trying to get ESXi running on as many computers that I had available. And for the most part, it worked quite well. Do the like, comment, subscribe thing. We'll see you next time. Stay tuned for that next video where we continue talking about all things tech.